We've been using constants and literals up to now. However, you're going to want values to change as you build apps. For that, you need variables. Let's look at variables and how to use them. We'll start with the same code from the last lesson. I'm going to try adding two more lines to this code so that I can change the size and the area and how I make them. So I'm going to do size equals 10. And I'll use area, and I'll do that with pi times size. And you notice we get a bunch of errors here. Let's take a look at what those errors are. So I'll just pick on the, air, the area one here. And it says cannot assign value. Area is a let constant. So it's saying that let will only let you keep one type of value. You need to tell the Swift compiler you'll be changing this value. Fortunately, the difference between a constant and a variable is a simple keyword. And you can see it right there in the fix that says to change let to var. So if I go ahead and I fix this, if I just tap the button, you'll see that area over here has changed to var. Now I can do the same thing here with the size, and you can see it says it there, but I'm actually going to change this manually. And I'll just type in var there, and you can see it says that's what I want, so I'll hit return. And now all my errors are gone. And now I can go ahead and hit run my code here. And you'll see that I'm actually getting new values for these values. So there we go. Now let's look at this a little more practically. So I'm going to head over to the app. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to make a new file. So I'll put up my started bar here and I'll hit the code button, hold it down, add a Swift file, and I'm going to call this global settings. Things we put in this file are constants and variables accessible from the entire application. Now you have to be careful here and only add stuff that you want to control for the entire app. In later lessons, we'll move this to a settings file. Global variables like this can be dangerous and very difficult to debug, so avoid them. However, for very simple stuff like this, they work okay, and it's going to show my point quite well. So I'm going to add some lines of code here as examples, and we'll put three constants and a variable in here. So let's do let company name equal Huli Pizza. And then I'm going to do let surf girl equals surf girl one. pizza image equal pizza. And finally, var color equals color dot blue. Now let's see how these work. I'm going to go ahead and close up the sidebar. I won't need it for now. And I'm going to go over here to content view on my tabs. And I can change the background color by just going over here where it says background color green on the bottom here. and change that to color. And you can see it turns blue. And I can do the same thing with the banner image. So if I go a little up of here, instead of using the literal, I can change this to pizza image if I wanted to. And that changes the image and gets me a very different looking app than what I had originally had started with. Now here's where it gets interesting. I'm gonna go back up to the top of my content view above where it says var body and add another variable. We're going to call this one banner image. Now I can go over here to my image, and then I can change pizza image here to banner image. And I don't get anything at all. If I take a look over here in global settings, you'll see that I didn't capitalize the S of Surf Girl. And when I do that, there it goes. I've got my image again. So you got to make sure your values are correct is, of course, an important detail there. So we've got that one now. And you can see what's happening. This is what's known as a local variable over here, Okay, this line 4. So it's going to be in the local area of this. We have what's here is called a struct, which is which we'll talk more about later. But it's a way of making your own types. And we'll talk a lot more about that as we go through the course. This right here is within the struct, and so this 
is going to be where I am making most of my variables. Now there's something very interesting about structs that I think is you need to know about. And let's go do one more line here and you'll see what happens. I'm going to do a var and I'm going to call it color. And then I'm going to say equals color dot green. And if you notice what happens on our page here, we go back to green. Now I already have a variable color, but this is the local variable color. Whatever is local will be the one that your application will use. So something within content view won't use the global variable. And you can see this is why globals are so frowned on. It's hard to keep track of what's going on if you've got globals and locals with the same name. And so we can have things like this causing problems, but more importantly, you really should be putting them into places like this and not use the globals. But of course, that brings up another set of questions. How do you put something into this struct if you're not going to be using globals and you have something that you want to share between places? And we're going to put one more line in here and we'll see what happens with that. So we're going to go here and I'm going to put in var and I'm going to put title. And I'm going to just type that as string. Okay. And I can hit return. And you see up top here, we've got an error. It's not showing here, but you're getting a certain error. And it's called missing argument for parameter title in call. For the content view type to work, all of the variables must be defined. Since title is not defined, it must be passed to the type through a parameter. Now, content view itself is being called from somewhere else. And that's over here in this last one we really haven't talked about called My App. My App starts your app. This is where you're going to put things that will start your whole app up if you have startup procedures. Usually, you're just going to have the one view that's going to be the first view. And that, in our case, that's here at Content View. And you can see here it's got an error that says missing argument for parameter title in call. That's where this missing argument is. And I have it fixed here. It's going to put in title. Now, I'm going to have it to command Z here for a sec because I want to point something out here. There are a lot of versions of this. If you look at the autocomplete, anything that is a variable in a struct will show up as a parameter. Now, we don't always have to use this, and we'll try it in a little bit of how to play with that in a little different way so I can start changing some of these. But I'm only interested in this one for this case. So I'm going to go ahead and hit title again, hit return. And now I can put something into this and I'm going to put in company name. And now my error disappears. If I wanted to change this in global settings, of course, I can put it into here. And now I can go over here to my content view and now use title properly. And so instead of having the text of Hooli Pizza Company here, I can make this as title. And there's the title. And now my text is reading Hooli Pizza Takeout. I want to go to that one last case. And where you most lawfully use that is in subviews. So we've got, for example, our menu item view down here. Okay. I'm going to go into menu item view over here. I can close up the sidebar so we can see more. So here I am in menu item view, and I'm going to go over here and add another variable. And this time we're going to call it image name. And I'm going to make this a string. And I'm going to set it to pizza image. So that'll be my default case. I'm going to come back down here to where it says pizza, and I'm going to put in the image name there. And that'll give me whatever image I want here. Now, I'm going to go back up to the top again to content view. And we have our menu item views. So I'm going to put here another menu item view, which we can screw it up a little bit here so we can see it well. And I'm going to do menu item view. There it is. I'll put in the parentheses, and you'll see that it's now got the two options. It's got the blank one, which it's using already to put the pizza image. But I can select my image by using image name and using image name as a parameter to say what I want here. 
And I'm going to go back up here. I've already got here banner image. So let's use banner image for this. And you'll see on the bottom there, we have a surfer for our banner image that's going to be our place marker one. And just to clean it up, we can put some padding leading here. So let's just do that real quick. And now it's aligned with everything else. So variables and scopes are critical to building apps. Variables that you change values either by assignment or passing them through parameters. However, we're going to want more control over their values. In our next lesson, we'll use some logic to make decisions and change variables in our code.